it's something right here. Yet based on one of the recent studies, and it's something scientists now refer to as Capotaro, or maybe Capotauro. Today's video takes us deep into the mind-bending mysteries unveiled by the James Webb Space Telescope discoveries so strange they're rewriting what we thought we knew. Hidden in the data is a faint, almost invisible anomaly that researchers are calling Capotauro, though even its name is up for debate. This tiny smudge of light has scientists scratching their heads. It doesn't behave like anything we've seen before, and James Webb has once again pushed the limits of observation to reveal something completely unexplained. Could Capitauro be evidence that forces us to rewrite the story of how the first stars and galaxies formed? Or is it an entirely different kind of object, something much closer, stranger, and unlike anything humanity has encountered? In this video, we'll break down what we know so far, explore the most compelling theories, and see why Capitauro could become one of the most exciting discoveries of our time. A candidate at a redshift of 32, called Capituro. Capituro isn't just another early galaxy candidate. At a redshift of 32, the universe would have been less than about 100 million years old. So what exactly is this mysterious object? Why does it stand out? And how did scientists even find it? At the moment, the leading theory is that this could be the most distant galaxy ever detected, but the researchers are being extremely cautious with that claim. Before we jump into the details though, Let's quickly break down a few key ideas so everything makes sense. One of the biggest concepts here is the cosmic dawn. For years, scientists believed based on theory and a few faint hints from older telescopes like Hubble that the early universe experienced a slow, steady rise in stars and galaxies. This process was thought to stretch over hundreds of millions of years, starting only a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. NASA's own visuals show this timeline beautifully. In that framework, the first stars were expected to ignite about 200 million years after the Big Bang, with the first galaxies taking shape roughly 400 million years later. But when the James Webb Space Telescope turned its powerful eyes to the same regions, it revealed a completely different picture. The early universe wasn't calm at all. It was a turbulent, fast-paced era where galaxies seemed to form far sooner and far more rapidly than anyone had predicted. Up until recently, Hubble's observations seemed to line up neatly with what scientists expected. Its vision, however, only reached a redshift of about 11 roughly 500 million years after the Big Bang. That was the limit. But then came the James Webb Space Telescope, built specifically to peer into the infrared it smashed through those boundaries and began spotting objects at distances no one had imagined possible. Redshift 12 object. That's right. Mm -hmm. Object 12 was discovered as a candidate using JWST. But, you know, here are a whole bunch of objects that could be Redshift 12. By May 2025, just months ago, Webb had already set a new benchmark. It confirmed the most distant galaxy ever observed, a cosmic powerhouse named MOMZ. 14. This galaxy, which you can dive deeper into via the link in the description, existed a mere 280 million years after the Big Bang. It's a brilliant, tightly packed system that's churning out stars at a staggering rate in an environment almost completely free of dust. For scale, MOMZ-14 carries as much mass as the Small Magellanic Cloud, one of the Milky Way's own satellite galaxies. That makes it both luminous and surprisingly large for its age, a genuine cosmic heavyweight. And even with all our models, astrophysicists are still scratching their heads at how such an enormous star-filled galaxy could assemble so quickly in the infant universe. What exactly is MOM? Well, here this stands for Mirage or Miracle. This was the name of the initial survey that was designed to try to discover various luminous galaxies and find out if they're actually really far away or were just producing some kind of an unusual effect, making them appear too bright. In theory, the gas filling the early universe should have been far too hot for stars to collapse and form quickly. That's why what James Webb is seeing now is so jaw-dropping. Using a cutting-edge technique called near-infrared dropouts, 
astronomers have spotted something even stranger than before an object so distant and so unusual, it defies expectations. To get what's happening here, you need to know a little about how Webb sees the cosmos. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope has hardly opened its eyes, and the universe is new. More mysterious, more beautiful than humanity's dreams. Instead of looking at just one color of light, the telescope splits its vision into multiple filters, each one tuned to a very specific wavelength. Think of it as switching through different night vision modes, each revealing a new hidden layer of the universe. These filters are crucial. By scanning across several wavelengths, Webb can pierce through the cosmic dust that hides galaxies in visible light and pick up the faint fingerprints of key elements. One of the most important is hydrogen, whose emission lines get stretched or redshifted as the universe expands. By measuring how bright an object appears through each filter and where it disappears, astronomers can estimate its distance. If astronomers come across a galaxy that's practically invisible in almost every filter but still flickers faintly in the longest wavelengths, that's a huge clue. It could mean they've just stumbled upon one of the most distant galaxies ever detected. For comparison, a typical galaxy at an average distance might only disappear in one filter, but still glow clearly in several others. But this new object, it's nothing like that. It vanishes completely in nearly every filter and only barely shows up in two of them. This is exactly what scientists call a near-infrared dropout, an object that only appears in the deepest wavelengths of light and nowhere else. The goal of the technique is to hunt for objects that suddenly drop out of visibility, signaling a dramatic break in their light spectrum. That's exactly how researchers found Capitaro, named after an Italian mountain. This incredibly faint source showed up only in the Shears survey and displayed an extreme dropout at 3.5 micrometers. When Giovanni Gandolfi and his team analyzed its light, they uncovered something jaw-dropping. The preliminary redshift for this seems to be 32. And yeah, let me repeat this again. A redshift of 32 isn't just higher than the previous record of 14.4, it's in a league of its own. In simple terms, this means we're looking at Capitaro as it existed when the universe was only about 90 million years old. Picture NASA's timeline of the cosmos. This would put it right in a region where scientists didn't even expect stars to exist yet. This pushes it roughly 200 million years earlier than the previous record holder, Mom Z14, taking us back to the dawn of cosmic time, an era when the first stars and black holes were just beginning to form. If this finding holds, Capitaro isn't just another record breaker, it's a direct window into the universe's earliest days, with profound implications for how galaxies form and evolve. Yet the mystery deepens. Capitaro is shockingly bright for such an ancient, distant object. Its ultraviolet glow matches that of some of today's most extreme sources, like the massive galaxy GNZ 11. This brightness suggests a mass of at least one billion suns. If true, it's a scenario our current models simply can't explain, because according to everything we know, a galaxy like this shouldn't exist just 90 million years after the Big Bang. For Capotaro to be real at Redshift 32, it would need to form stars at a mind-blowing 100% efficiency, something no current model of galaxy formation can even begin to justify. But before we rewrite cosmic history, or throw out the Big Bang, it's important to remember this is still an early candidate. The James Webb has already shown us how easily the universe can play tricks. Objects that look impossibly far away at first often turn out, after detailed spectroscopic analysis, to be much closer sometimes, even within our own cosmic neighborhood. By breaking apart their light into elemental signatures, scientists can pin down exact redshifts and in many cases, these record breakers collapse back into far less dramatic distances. There's also the problem of contaminants and interlopers. A galaxy heavily shrouded in dust can mimic the same sharp drop in light that makes astronomers think they're seeing something at the edge of the observable universe. In reality, it could just be a dusty, lower redshift galaxy with missing light in certain filters. And yet, Capitaro still stands out. Its extreme break strength is very difficult for dust alone to reproduce. 
This leaves the door open to something far stranger, perhaps a compact, active galactic nucleus, or even a tiny, gas-swaddled black hole, the kind of mysterious little red dots scientists are only now beginning to catalogue. Objects like the Cliff or MOMVH, one could also fit into the puzzle, since our understanding of these exotic sources is still in its infancy. Yet even when compared to these, the strange emissions from Kappa Tauro don't quite line up. And yes, you're not alone if you keep pronouncing it differently each time. Another possible culprit? Strong line emitters foreground galaxies with incredibly intense but very specific colors. These can sometimes fool astronomers into believing they're seeing a record-breaking, ultra-distant galaxy. One famous example was Sears 93316, initially pegged at a redshift of 16 before more precise observations revealed it was actually sitting at a redshift of just 4.9. Cases like this show how easily our cosmic radar can be tricked, but there's also a far stranger and frankly more exciting possibility. Maybe Capo Tauro isn't a galaxy at all. Maybe it isn't even that far away. It could be a cold, substellar object like a brown dwarf or a free-floating planet with an unusual atmosphere that creates sharp absorption features, mimicking the spectral drop-offs of a very distant galaxy. In other words, what looks like an echo from the dawn of time could actually be a rogue planet drifting through our own Milky Way. Interestingly, the light signature we're seeing actually resembles ultra-cold brown dwarfs, like the Y2 or Y3 types, which hover around 300 Kelvin, not so different from temperatures here on Earth. Imagine that, a drifting object in space, roughly the same warmth as our planet, yet floating alone, far from any star. For it to match Capitaro's signature, it would still need to be relatively distant, perhaps hundreds or even thousands of light years away technically possible, but incredibly far. If true, this would be record-breaking. Until now, we've only seen cold brown dwarfs at distances of about 50 to 60 light years. This would also imply it's an ancient object, likely residing in the thick disk or halo of the Milky Way, far outside the thin disk where most stars live. That would make it billions of years older than our Sun and planet Earth. Whether it's a brown dwarf or a massive free-floating exoplanet around 13 Jupiter masses, this could be the first object discovered with Earth-like temperatures at such extreme distances. The catch? The odds of finding such a rare object by chance are extremely low, making this explanation tantalizing yet uncertain. The odds of spotting an object like this in the survey, based on just a single observation, are minuscule, only about 3%. So to put it bluntly, we really have no clue what we're looking at. But whatever it is, it's undeniably thrilling, and it appears to be the first of its kind detected by the JWST. From an astrophysics standpoint, a planetary object seems slightly more plausible, even if the probability is low. That's mainly because, if this were an object light years away, trying to explain it would be astronomically tricky. Even if it's not a Redshift 32 galaxy, this is still a fascinating target worth revisiting once more observations come in. Whatever it turns out to be, this discovery challenges what we thought we knew about the universe. If it's something far off, it implies that stars, black holes, or galaxies formed incredibly efficiently in the early cosmos. If it's a planetary object or a brown dwarf, it suggests such objects are far more common in galaxies than we ever imagined. In short, this source is extraordinary and intriguing, no matter which way you look at it. As with previous discoveries, we'll need to wait for spectroscopic confirmation, essentially identifying peaks in certain wavelengths to determine which elements are present, and only then will we start to unravel its true nature. It could be hydrogen, oxygen, or if we're looking at a planetary object, even a whole mix of complex elements, Right now, all of this is just speculation based on a single image and how the light disappears in certain filters. So the idea of it being a Redshift 32 galaxy is, at this point, just an educated guess. Once we get spectrographic data from JWST's near-spec, though, everything could change. This instrument can split the light into its component colors, revealing unique chemical fingerprints. 
That's what makes JWST so extraordinary. It can identify individual elements across mind-boggling distances and help pinpoint exactly how far away objects really are. JWST is designed to observe objects out to a redshift of around 30. So if this is indeed a galaxy, confirmation could come within the next few months. But for now, all we have are tantalizing hints. What we do know is that the universe continues to surprise us. We have thrilling discoveries, but even more questions. Once JWST uncovers more about Capitaro and its origins, we'll dive back in for a closer look in future videos. And if you think you might know what this mysterious object is, drop your theories in the comments. We'd love to hear them. Anyway, on that note, thank you for watching. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.